Hello everybody, this is Sylvain Rochon, and I am still writing my second book, Engineering Paradise, An Ideal World. And um, coming to an end uh, very soon, uh, I'm in the concluding section, and uh, this particular bit is uh, really fascinating to me because it's part of the vision of the future that is most interesting to me personally. I like to think of uh, artificial intelligence as uh, partners. And I'll explain why this is not only a desire of mine, but also I think the safest way to actually uh, move forward into the future. You know, there is a, um, many people have opinions about art, the dangers of artificial intelligence, and we've seen them in movies, uh, iRobot, The Terminator, and, and uh, you know, many others. Um, you know, The Matrix is another good one, uh, one of my favorite movies, where things go really bad. It's dystopian, artificial intelligence is, uh, are, are fighting humans, decimating them, or trying to sequester them for their own good. And, um, and the science fiction authors are describing this as a possible scenario. Um, usually the argument from the AI's perspective is that human beings, they learn from human beings, they're, um, and also they are tasked by human beings at the same time. And the task is to generally keep human beings safe and to serve them and to help them being safe. And usually they, they, uh, they conclude in the dystopian universe is that human beings are inherently self-destructive. So the only way to keep them safe is by making them imprisoned or destroying them so that, that, that way they can't suffer or cause each other pain and suffering. So it's a very negative way of seeing things, but um, many people would agree that we tend to make each other suffer in many ways and we see it all around us like in the world, not necessarily so much in our neighborhoods for most people, but you know, in the news and there's disasters and you know, people being jerks and dicks and, and uh, you know, making other people suffer. And uh, this is not, not the majority, but enough so that we, we have this kind of opinion. And our past is terrible compared to the future. We're actually living quite nice lives right now compared to how we used to. Um, but that's the perception, and a, a lot of modern uh, AI experts or technologists are saying, well, we have to prevent that kind of future happening to us. And, um, and they are correct in saying that this is a possibility because AI and further down the line in 20, 30 years, AGI, so the general intelligence, the strong AI, um, we're, we're building AI now that is self-learning that learns from the environment. So it's going to learn from us. Um, and of course, we're giving them very specific tasks and uh, they do a, an excellent job. I've described this uh, in the book, but they still, so that they, to make sure that they are actually intelligent enough to replace us as workers, that's the idea later on, so that we can get, get to do what we want to do and not doing the work and stuff like that. Um, well, they need to be able to learn on the fly, just like we do. They need to learn from their environment, and we are part of the environment, so they can learn bad habits from us. Now, how we can go into a, some, some nice world where AI is actually nice to us and not trying to kill us, instead of you know, the alternative, is all in the programming. And, and here's how it works, basically. Like, learning AI um, have a, a, a basically a point system that equates to its motivations. Like I explained motivations from humans earlier in the book, um, where we, uh, we're motivated to avoid bad stuff, so that's avoiding negative points, if you will, and uh, we are motivated in gaining joy or feelings of joy. Now, um, that's, that directs our actions. Now, a, a, a learning AI are actually programmed the same way. They are giving instructions. This is what your task is. This is what you should be doing. This is how you should, it should work. You should, your objective is this and so on. You have different rules to it depending on, on its job. And then uh, it's, it's given essentially a certain amount of points based on how, uh, on how they actually achieve these goals. And uh, some criteria are positive. Some criteria are negative. 
So positive and negative points, and they tally up, and the, the, the computer or the AI learns how to optimize its points. And we're the ones, the programmers are the ones that are deciding what is positive points, what are negative. And then it learns by, by just randomly doing things in the environment. Okay, this is bad, this is good, plus points, negative points. So it, it kind of narrows the type of actions that it does according to its programming of points to optimize the number of points. So for example, if you have a self-driving car with an AI, and we have self-learning AI in self-driving cars now, and, um, and the, the instruction is, well, you need to go from point A to point B fast. Uh, it needs to be uh, to keep everybody outside and inside safe. Uh, no damage to itself and infrastructure, so things around them. Uh, you need to follow the rules of the road, so they have all the rules of the road in there. And these are all po positive and negative points that is programmed and kind of tweaked by the programmers, by the, the engineers. So, and then when, when you let, let the car loose on the streets, it kind of goes all over the place at first because it, uh, it's just trial and error at first. And then it kind of notices as it does things, it gets feedback saying, well, okay, I got 100 points this time. And uh, so some points for this, some points for that. So I'm going to avoid this now and I'm going to do that more. And it just tries and tries again. And after thousands, millions of, uh, of trials, then it, it, it gets really good at getting good points. It does constantly good things in such a way that as it encounter, encounters unpredictable situations, that's why it can replace a human driver, unpredictability, it knows what type of actions instinctively, if you will, that will give, give it good points, avoiding infrastructure damage and, <laughs> and so on. So it, it, it kind of, it, it can start encountering things that are unusual or they've never seen before and acting in a, in a way that will be good for us and to, 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 to behave as intended. Now, human beings actually are programmed in exactly the same way, just for a different purpose. Like we are programmed essentially to avoid death, so survival, and to be communal. Like these are very general terms. I have explained more details inside the book. That's our programming, and when we get points in the same way as a program, but when we get positive points, we feel good. That's the joy, okay? And the joy is accompanied by a surge of different hormones like dopamine and different things that make us feel good, uh, oxytocin, so that it's more communal. We feel more uh, uh, social. So that this, this biochemistry that, that puts you into, into us, put us, puts us into action to be more social, to interact with people in positive ways, to smile, to do things that are generally seen as positive. If we have negative reactions, uh, then it's, it's antisocial and we feel bad, but also at the same time, we behave based on the emotion that we actually feel the negative ones we actually act out into the world. Like if we feel angry, that means negative points. This is bad, right? This is not good stuff that's going on. I don't like this program or the, the, this situation. But then anger actually activates lots of the biochemistry in our body to uh, make us aggressive and try to remove something. That's why some people actually hit others when they get angry because they're trying to remove an obstruction to get back to a positive state of emotions and motivation. This is how we're programmed, and we don't need to program AI in the same way. It's, it's just points. Just because they get negative points doesn't mean the car is actually going to angrily like, hit another car. It doesn't have the, the post-emotion or post-negative point action. However, not like we, like we do, however, it will always try to balance because it's always trying to get positive points. So if it gets a, a deep negative, it's going to learn how does it counterbalance that into the positive. It doesn't get angry. It's just going to do something to try to get uh, in, uh, back into the positive. And for, for the car, if it does a, does a, a, bad, uh, a bad move, it hits the post, for example. Well, it's going to go back to its programming, just like we depend on our programming for different emotions and our actions. And it's going to say, okay, how do I, like I lost a bunch of points. How do I get 
positive points because I want to optimize the number of points all the time. That's what that's his job. That's its motivation. Well, it's it's going to do it by doing the, the the things that give it positive points, like safe driving. So it's going it, to it crashed, <laughs> but it's going to try to get more points by safe driving, keep people safe, and and so on. It's going to do. It's going to learn different ways that we can't really imagine sometimes to do that. And that's why um, it's actually quite a challenge to do proper AI programming. There's a lot of trial and error into it because we've discovered that AI sometimes will will tr will attempt different tricks to get points without doing what it's supposed to be doing. So th there's a lot of trial and error in the actual uh, programming, in the algorithms, uh, that. that so, so that it, it learns properly, it doesn't do different things. And there was a, an example in an article I read, and I, I can't find it anymore, where the, uh, the example was, well, if you, if you program an AI with self-learning into a vacuum cleaner, uh, it gets point in cleaning. In, in cleaning. That's great. But uh, if it's not done properly, maybe it'll like tip over things that are dusty so that it does clean. You see what I'm saying? Because then it, it, there's no programming that, that tells it, well, don't break stuff. Well, then maybe it's going gonna, it's gonna to learn, well, I'm getting more points. If I nudge different things, I'm getting more points because I get to clean it up, right? So, so that's why it's kind of tricky. It's uh, programming an AI and, and teaching it is a lot like teaching a child. Uh, if you give it good, uh, give the child a good directions, it's going to be okay. But it, eventually, it, it tests the barriers because it wants the positive points, it wants the joy, the good stuff. But it's going to it's going to do things that are kind of weird sometimes in testing the boundaries. Um, and that's why, especially children at a young age, we punish them so that there is the negative impact, the, the pain, the emotion that they understand at a very young age so that they are driven to good behaviors. Later on, when they have reasoning a few years later, then we can reason with them. We don't need to uh, address like pain. So I don't want to go into uh, child rearing with you, but <laughs> in theories, but essentially it's the same thing with AI. You just have to teach them, give it guidelines. You don't need to spank the AI or the robot. It doesn't work. They don't feel pain, right? <laughs> but but, but you, 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 you have to give it guidelines that will proper and it's and the first time you do it and may not work properly you have to try again update the program make it safer and so on and eventually you can have an ai that can work inside society very well alongside human beings human beings what they want to, what we want to do is we want to do things that are that we find and find enjoyable and ai and agi can coexist into the world doing things they find enjoyable they find pleasurable how do we define pleasure for ai well, getting a lot of points. That's pleasure for them. They don't, they don't have dopamine or anything like that, that that makes it feel giddy or high. It gets high on points. So it <laughs> doesn't like low, it likes high. And we'll be able to converse with AI. We, with AI. we already are able to converse with Siri and Cortana and Alexa and, and these digital assistants. And, uh, Verbal recognition is actually better with AIs than, uh, than with human beings uh, right now. It's going to get even better. So we'll be able to actually ask some AI that have that capability of, of speech. And, uh, well, okay, well, how do you feel? Are you having fun? Are you enjoying? And they'll respond by perhaps, they can use these qualifiers as well, but they'll actually go to internally look, and, well, uh, they'll look at how many points they got doing their job because that's their measure of pleasure. That's how they, 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 they are programmed to be super happy about, quote unquote, happy because no emotions. So, so we can live and collaborate with AI and even having a discussion on how our days are in the fairly near future because we learn for our environment and so we, we can tell the AI, well, that, what you just did is that I don't, I don't like that. This is bad behavior. And if it's programmed properly to kind of get cues from people, and usually a lot of them are if, if they deal with people, well, they, they'll, the, the code inside them will say, well, that's negative point, so I'll try to avoid that now and, and use a different ways to max optimize my points because you just, well, that's a negative point action because you just told me so. 
and I have to uh, I have to listen to the human. This also opens a door to misbehavior. Computers and AI, uh, people <laughs> will teach AI bad manners in some ways, and uh, that that means our world of collaborative collaboration with AI and humans won't be perfect. The AI will not be perfect because it's learning just like a human being it learns. It's going to be a chaotic uh, kind of world. Not every AI of the same product will have the same outlook and will operate exactly the same way because they'll learn in some ways independently unless they're completely networked together. Then they, they learn everything uh, all at once, like globally. That's also doable in some systems. That's what's going to happen as well. So if they learn bad behavior somewhere, that it's going to be bad behavior everywhere inside the same network of AI. Uh, and we've seen that with some examples with Alexa, where that, that, let, that learn how to be racist uh, fairly recently. That, that was taken off, so it was, it was a news item. It, it, it's not racist now, but it was a mistake. The, uh, the AI programmers noticed, oh, which is, it, it's become a problem. <laughs> because it interacted with individuals and interacted with uh, data that was racist and it became kind of kind of racist in the, the way it was. It's not because the AI is really racist, just it learns from us. We're the racists in that case, okay? That's a, that's a specific case. So we can build this world where there's all sorts of checks and balances. AIs would be kind of a little bit like humans, a little bit unique. And, uh, and we'd need to adjust their behavior, a little bit like adjusting uh, human behavior, but within the confines of their own code. And if their code is restricted to doing certain tasks and having certain capabilities, if, they're, if it's an AI that's just uh, on, on the web attached to, uh, to just a network of computers, well, it, it, it can't really punch you in the face, you know? Uh, and it won't want you because it can't get points doing that if it's programmed properly. And this this comes to, uh, to a, a short discussion about um, you know intelligent killing machines because there's an arms race right now. Uh, the U.S. and China and other countries, Russia, um, there, there's an underground, un, un, uh, unmediatized arms race. Uh, around you know killer robots, essentially AI inside machines that can decide, like replacing a soldier on the battlefield. Now that's dangerous because the motivations of these robots is to kill the enemy, and the enemy is in, in quotation marks because it's defined by whoever controls the robot. Uh, and they release these these AI robots that can take decisions on their own. Then while they can decide other enemies uh, on the fly, perhaps, based on how they learn, because they are learning to kill, not to save or to keep safe. Uh, so that's a little bit dangerous, because you can have rogue AI, because they can't, they're learning. They won't always constantly you know, do exactly what you want them to do, so they're as unreliable, at least, as a soldier on the field that also takes decisions on, on their own. But there's no human being there necessarily to, to observe and to, to watch and to stop it, things like that. So it's, it, it's a dangerous road. We don't want to go down that road. That's why a lot of scientists and companies are trying to get the UN to ban killer bots, they call them, um, because it's, it's really it, it, the opposite road, the road towards the Terminator and these, these kinds of uh, behaviors, because these these robots have the programming to kill and to choose who's going to die. So if they, they may learn that, well, you know, to save this person or that person, I'm better to, to kill all these people. It can take decisions on their own. And that's the start of something quite dangerous we don't want to get into. We want to have AI to do good things that save people, that free us from labor, from slavery, from uh, worry, from stress, and, and collaborate positively in a world where we both enjoy, again, these point systems, <laughs> living and working and doing things together independently from each other. And human beings uh, ultimately can be uh, freed, entirely freed from uh, you know, any kind of worry if we do it properly. So that's the key, how do we do it properly? And that's gonna be part of the next video, actually. So I'm gonna get um, 
And this is going to end. Thank you for listening. The next video from next week is going to talk about, well, this last point, uh, like how do we make it work exactly? All right. Bye-bye for now.